Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on Indian Ethos in Management and uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about management lessons from Kautilya's Arthashastra. This is going to be part 4 of our lectures uh, in this series where we have been talking about the management lessons which we get from Kautilya's Arthashastra. And uh, in today's lecture, I will be telling you about the decision making processes, what is the consultative and consensual group decision making process. What is the, the analysis of uh, power, the way we analyze the power, how to go for understanding theory of organizations, there is a limb theory or what you call as ideas of prakritis, what you call as the nature of a person, attitude of a person and then I will be letting you go through the Mandel theory of organizations and uh, eventually we will talk about cognitive inference systems and types of controls, the way we uh, derive control, the methods of control by the way of cognitive inference system, the way we perceive, we unperceive or we draw inferences out of a given situation. So, with these uh, agendas of uh, today's lecture, I will first be telling you about the decision making processes, what is consultative and consensual group decision making. Uh, my dear learners, as we all know that uh, management means in some way or the other, it's, it's, it is called as decision making. There is not a single activity of management where we do not take decision. Each and every function of management, it requires some kind of decision making in the process, whether it is consultative decision making or it is consensual uh, de group decision making or it is an indi individual decision making. But we have to make a decision in management and eventually that uh, decision is being escalated the formulated decision is being escalated to the top management and they are the one who have to take the call on that uh, decision which has been formulated by the managers. So, Arthashastra basically recommends the consultative and consens uh, uh, consensus oriented uh, group decision making. It never says that we should go by individual decisions because we all know that management is a process and when we consider the entire business to be a family, we need to understand that uh, every person's uh, idea or every person's opinion plays a very vital and important role and it is reflected in the metaphor of the wheel and uh, Arthashastra uh, very eloquently took the example of a wheel that one wheel alone does not turn. In order to make the wheel moving, in order to turn it, we need uh, another wheel to, to help it, to support it, uh, to run, to turn, to move. So, in order to tur turn the wheel, others are also needed and that is what is the me metaphor which is being reflected uh, in this very uh, discussion where the Cotillia says that if you have only one wheel, that one wheel alone cannot uh, turn. So, if you really wish that uh, uh, wheel to turn or it, uh, it to move, others are also needed and all undertakings should be uh, preceded by the consultation and uh, Cotillia also advised against uh, relying only on a few advisors. Cotillia was of that opinion, this opinion that you should not rely on only one advisor and selection of advisor is equally important. So, there are two things here uh, which is embedded. One is that you should not rely on only one advisor, number one. Number two, you should have more than one advisor, but only a few advisors. You should not have uh, the advisors, uh, you know, you have a complete list of uh, uh, advisors. No, you should have uh, uh, competent advisors who are well versed into their field and for difficult decisions, uh, you know, the advisor is supposed to uh, give you the advice and uh, he advises relying on more number of counsellors. So, any person who is who has to take a decision, who has to make a decision. For difficult decisions, uh, he advises relying on more number of counsellors. This is what Cotillia wanted to say. Although the group should not be too large, because if you have a large number of a fleet of uh, uh, counsellors or what you call as advisors, that uh, you may find it difficult to arrive at your decision. Because some some somebody may 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 uh, you know give the give the vote or opinion in the favor of your decision, or somebody may go against that. So if you have a, a fleet of uh, a, a large fleet of advisors, then of course you will not be able to arrive at your decision uh, on time. Because timely decision is equally important in management. So imagine that uh, the circumstances were different when Cotillia uh, uh, gave these advices which, which is there in front of us in the form of a book called Arthashastra. But at that point of time also it was written that you should not rely on only advice of only one person. So one person should not be the advisor for you, you should have at least few advisors. 
But along with that, there is also a caution that you should not have a large fleet of advisors because the moment you will have large number of advisors, it would be it would really become difficult for you to arrive at decisions on time. And further, the secrecy of the strat strategic decisions cannot be maintained because if you have huge number of people advising you, then of course, they may uh, they may actually pass on this information uh, by the way of informal discussions. So, so that secrecy of uh, or confidentiality of the strategic, strategic decisions cannot be maintained if you have large group of uh, advisors or what you call as members. So, what is the midway? How to find a midway? That on one hand we are saying the, that you should not rely on only one advisor. On the other extreme, you are saying that you should avoid having huge number of advisors. So, there is a midway. What is that midway? The competence of the advisor is also an important element as holding a consultation with one only uh, one person only may, you may not be able to reach a, a decision uh, or a proper decision in difficult matters and uh, with more counselors if you have huge number of advisors it is with difficulty that decisions on matters are reached or counsel guarded so this is what this this is simply i'm i'm quoting what is written there uh, in the book by, of arthashastra by kotelia which says that you should try to find a midway that neither you should have only one advisor nor you should have a fleet of uh, or huge number of advisors or large number of advisors. You should try to find a midway and midway is that that you should uh, find a, a few number of few members as your advisors and so that you can make a consensus and, and you can take, a, take an informed decision. So, taking a decision which is based on the fundamental which is actually based on facts or, or what you call as factual decision supported with the facts and arguments that is going to uh, let us help in taking the right decision at right time. So, there are two uh, things which are very uh, important and they come to us by the way of this discussion. One is that we should have few advisors at least with us while making a decision who are well versed into their field and second one is the, the competency of those advisors. Those advisors need to be competent otherwise what will happen? they will not be able to give you the right advice, the correct advice. So, we have to find a midway, this is what uh, Cotelia wanted to say about uh, the decision making process and it is very much applicable in the field of management or in the modern day corporate enterprises also. So, in present days time, we need to understand that while making a decision, it is not only me who is going to take a decision, it has to be a group decision making process wherein you consult with the uh, with, with all people who are actually acting as stakeholders, who are actually party to this decision making process and there has to be a consensus while making a decision. So, there is a consensual decision making process that too in the decision into, into this uh, group decision making process. Now, the second aspect which comes to us uh, by the way of Kotelia's uh, book uh, of Arthashastra is analysis of power. That how to analyze the power in, in a given organization or power as a prime mover, how to consider this uh, analysis of power. The moment somebody is asking you what is power, power is basically defined as position of strength that what I possess, how, how, how powerful I am. The moment I say power uh, in business enterprise, the politics automatically comes and we call it power politics, power and politics. So, who is uh, in position of strength in your business organization? That is something which is always related to the power. When it comes to define the power, we always uh, find a person, the name of a person or a designation or a particular uh, uh, responsibility of a person that this person is in position of strength in this organization. But we need to analyze the power in, in the right manner if we believe what uh, Kotelia has to say about the analysis of power. So, Arthashastra refers to three types of powers. It, it never talks about considering the power to a person or to a designation or to a role which you are uh, playing in your business enterprise. It says that there are three types of powers. Number one is power of knowledge. The person who is having the knowledge about the organization, about the processes, about the work you we are supposed to perform. So, power here does not mean that uh, you are at the top of uh, your business role or you are working in a business enterprise where you are uh, shouldering the responsibility of heading that institution. It means you are the most powerful person or you are in position of the strength. No, 
powerful person is supposed to have the knowledge also so the first power is power of knowledge second is the power of authority and here comes the role of your designation the the responsibility which you have got which you have uh, uh, inherited from by the way of your designation by the way of your uh, your role in that business organization and third one is the power of personal energy and drive and my dear learners this first and third these uh, two uh, types of powers you will always find them to be significant to be playing uh, a significant role in in business processes you would find that a person who is having knowledge and the person who is having that personal energy and drive is always having a significant role in the in a business organization or in any organization regardless of the designation the person is enjoying at times we witness that uh, there is a person there is one person who is uh, chairing that uh, institution the person who is chairing the department who is heading the department but at times we find another person who is not at all chairing who is not at all in in the position of uh, the power in terms of authority but by the way of knowledge and personal energy and what you call as drive Uh, the person is actually gaining it, uh, he or she has gained significant role in the business enterprise for every decision uh, organization looks at that person and here is uh, 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 what uh, cotelia defines the power uh, in terms of three types of powers power of knowledge power of authority and the power of personal energy and drive so it is very practical also it's n- it is not at all theoretical that you are in position of a designation and you are powerful no it is your knowledge it is your personal energy and drive and drive and of course your authority which is going to define that yes you are uh, having the power or you are in position of strength so what are the main characteristics of these three types of power that we need to understand here if you look at the the typo, typology of power and the basis of power you will you would find that the power of counsel to whom the person to whom uh, we look for the advice the the suggestion the guidance and and for that the basis is the knowledge or expertise anybody who is having uh, the power of knowledge or expertise in a particular domain is always uh, approached by by each and every person in the department in the organization uh, and because of one thing that the person is in position of power of knowledge or expertise and this is called uh, if we have to define it in terms of types of power we would call it the power of counsel the second one is the power of influence and here comes the authority financial control of wealth how powerful a person is in terms of authority or in terms of financial control of wealth and here comes the role of influence that due to influence we are actually approaching a, a person and the third one is the power of personal energy and it is actually the individual drive Uh, of of that person here the basis of power is the individual drive the the basic traits the leadership skills of that person who is in position of that power so my dear learners if we look at the main characteristics uh, of these three types of power which cotelia define in terms of uh, uh, power of knowledge power of authority and power of personal energy and drive we find the basis of the the three different bases for uh, for uh, these three types of power one is uh, knowledge and expertise another is authority and financial control of wealth and third one is individual drive so if you have to uh, consider that who is powerful in in a given organizational setup we need to understand that the most powerful person the most powerful designation or the individual is the one who is in position of all three types of power so if you are having you are in position of these three types of power of course you have the power you have the strength you people will uh, actually approach you because of your knowledge and expertise because of your authority because of your financial control of wealth and of course the individual drive is is another factor which which actually makes a person which actually makes an individual uh, powerful so uh, three types of powers are basically recognized by the way of this uh, discourse by the way of this discussion which we are we have uh, you know just uh, done which we have actually uh, discussed about uh, the cotelia's uh, analysis of power where corresponding to these three types of powers there are three types of successes also so if you have the power power will actually lead to the success and along with the three types of power we have three different types of success so success is also classified in in, in the three different types based on uh, the the power 
based on the types of power. So, if you are attaining success through the power of counsel, there is this is another type that you have attained the success because of the power of counsel, because of your expertise. You can be a manager who has attained the success through the power of authority. You are in position of that authority, you are the KMP, you are the key managerial personnel in the business enterprise and you can actually mobilize the people, you can actually make this, uh, uh, you can actually give the instructions to all the subordinates to get a particular work done. So, you are successful in attaining your goals through the power of authority and eventually the success attained through the power of personal drive or energy. So, sometimes we find that a person is not at all in position of authority nor a person is having the power of expertise, but it is the individual or you can say it is the personality of a person which actually forces others to do, to cooperate, to help and to be active. So, at times we, we find that in our organization there are three different points of power. One which is having knowledge and expertise, another which is having uh, the, the individual drive or third one, the one of course, which is actually known as a de jure that is the person who is actually in position of strength in terms of authority and power. So, so you would find it so practical that in our day to day operations, in our day to day activities, regardless of the type of the organization, you would find the presence of these three different types of powers and success attained through uh, these three different types of power. So, this is the way Cotillia actually analyzed the power, that power is not something which you are getting or which emanates out of your authority only. It can be your knowledge which actually makes you powerful, it can be your individual personality, it, it can be your uh, the, the impact of your charismatic personality that people get influenced and they, they are driven to, to go for achieving the goal, goal of the organization. And of course, the, we cannot deny to the power which we get out of the authority because along with the authority, we get the responsibility. So, these are the main characteristics of three types of powers and along with that, uh, the three different types of successes, uh, success which we attain through different types of powers. So, uh, if you ask me that in this framework, uh, what, what is the relationship between the power and success? I would say that yes, they are interrelated they are they have a very strong positive correlation and uh, this actually acts as a framework power is to be used to attain success we all know and in an individual leader is expected to use all the three types of powers to attain success we cannot gain success attain success with only authority unless we have that expertise unless we have that knowledge or unless we have that uh, that that individual drive to motivate others, we cannot gain success. So, if we believe Cotillia's analysis of power, any individual leader is expected to use all three types of powers to attain success, whether all three powers are within one person or there are different power points. But we need all three types of powers to attain success. If we really wish to ensure the holistic development of any organization, these are three dif different types of powers which are needed to ensure the overall success what you call as all three types of successes. So, if the leader does not possess these three types of powers, what will happen? What, what to do? In that case, uh, he or she should endeavor to endow himself or herself with the power and success. There is no other way. If you do not possess uh, uh, these three types of powers, then of course, the success is, success is not with you. You, if you really want to be successful, you should endeavor to endow yourself with that power and success. And in this framework of uh, uh, the three types of power and three different types of successes, the power and achievement uh, orientation are interconnected. This is what Cotillia wanted to say, that if you really wish to achieve or if you re really wish to be successful in any of the business enterprise or in any of the operations, there has to be a uh, uh, interconnectivity with that uh, power and success because if you have all three types of power then all three types of success is bound to come to you this is what uh, Cotillia wanted to say so leaders are what is the advice for the leaders leaders are advised to use the power of counts power of authority and personal drive all three to demonstrate their achievement orientation if you somehow are able to demonstrate uh, your achievement orientation for that, you need uh, all three types of 
powers within you you should be in position of that and the, the moment you you demonstrate that it means there is a demonstration of your uh, orientation towards achievement so you will actually prove to be a vijiksu or a leader who is uh, going to achieve the the overall goal of the business enterprise although these three types of powers of knowledge wealth and prowess were identified in the context of interstate uh, relations at that point of time because it was not at all meant for business organizations it was actually meant for the interstate relations at that point of time because the context was entirely different but this conceptualization of the basis of power is also valid in organizational context you will find that they are very much valid in uh, today's corporate setup as well because at that point of time uh, we were not dealing with the modern day corporate entities we were not having these types of business formats like uh, companies or llps or partnership or sole trade business or startups we were having a, a interstate uh, relationship at that point of time so in that context uh, this was said that uh, these three types of powers of knowledge wealth and prowess they were identified but they are very much valid in today's uh, organizational context as well so my dear learners the learning here is the 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 point which we can infer out of this discussion is that there are three different types of powers when we analyze the power there are three different types of powers and each type of power is going to let you achieve something so if you really wish to be successful you should be in position of all three types of powers and along with that these powers will actually lead you towards all three types of success so this was about the analysis of power another dimension uh, from kotelia's arthasas which comes to us is the theory of organization what you call as theory of organizations some people call it ideas uh, idea of prakritis what you call as the nature some people call it limb theory and and they are basically uh, taking the the human body the human physiology physiology as a best example of the organization and then define the different uh, the role of different organs of human body and uh, their reflection in the day to day operations of business enterprise so this the metaphor of a human body was used by ancient thinkers to convey the concept of organization they they use this uh, human body or human physiology to uh, to convey the concept of organization that say the way nature ha have actually nature has actually organized a human body the the way eyes and, and the the placement of eyes nose uh, uh, mouth and 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 ears they, that is that is being done so th it is a best example of uh, the appropriate organization although it is used in the context of the state the limb theory is uh, also applicable to present day organizations or what you call as 21st century organization so in arthashastra the term used is prakriti they have used this term called prakriti prakriti means uh, the elements Uh, and the elements of what constitutes the state which are metaphorically compared with the human limbs and they basically define the seven different seven types of prakritis seven prakritis are were identified by kotilya and in the context of uh, present day organization the various prakritis uh, are defined like uh, the chief executive the dominant coalition the head office or the coordinating unit the organizational uh, domain the financial situation the worker the power uh, the worker the power and the competitors so these are three seven uh, uh, these are different uh, prakritis which you can find in the present day organization as well so seven prakritis were identified by kotilya and the relative importance uh, of these prakritis it depend upon the context in which the organization is operating so in which context you are operating that would actually determine the the role of uh, this theory called which is known as the idea of prakriti or what you call as limb theory so if we draw a parallel from arthashastra the metaphoric equivalence of the seven prakritis can be understood like this that the chief executive of business is the head chief executive of a business enterprise is representing the head in human body the dominant uh, coalition uh, is representing the eyes the financial aspect is basically representing uh, the mouth of a human body workers are basically representing the hand the organizational domain is the the field of vision that uh, the way you look for the overall success of the business enterprise what is your overall vision and coordinating units are basically regarded as the mind 
and uh, eventually the competitors are the other co competitors as the other person that if you look at somebody else uh, that is called the the other person which means the competitor we are looking at the way others look like the way others react to the way others respond to a given situation so this was about uh, the seven prakritis which in which the human physiology was uh, considered as a type of organization and uh, it cotillia tried to define the the different theories of management in this way so my dear learners in this way uh, in all four uh, segments of uh, cotillia management lessons from cotillia's arthas i try to give you the different insights which are still applicable in today's context in present day modern organization also you will find these uh, concepts to be more relevant to be uh, to be more uh, what you call as appropriate and if we apply them see the analysis of power how powerful it is that it is defining you practically that a person who is having authority may not have all three types of power and vice versa so i hope uh, that you must have enjoyed uh, this lecture of mine in which i have told you the different shades of uh, what cotillia wanted to say about the management the the ideas uh, which can be applicable by to the modern day organization to the present day organization so i hope you have enjoyed today's lecture of mine thank you so much